Well, our political editor, Faisal Islam, has the latest from Manchester. Housing surging up the political agenda. All the political parties now see it as an issue for which they have to find solutions to the broken rungs of the housing ladder. David Cameron claimed that this was a national crusade for house building. What we got was some red tape uh, that's levied on house builders, particularly the uh, need to have to build affordable houses for rent, uh, taking that away and say those houses could now be used uh, to buy. Uh, but it's essentially taking down a barrier uh, to an existing scheme, the Starter Homes Initiative. Uh, all in all, it should help increase housing supply. The house builders wanted it, they're happy and they're glad, but it's not transformational. It probably does fall short of the claim uh, of a new national crusade. I think most people feel to get round what has been a relatively poor house building record, even under, uh, under David Cameron uh, and George Osborne over the past five years. To turn that round is going to take years and probably more policy. But a, a real policy battle now, actually, um, a kind of more free market approach from the Conservative government, with Labour and the Lib Dems saying more council house building, more state and rent controls. So quite some divide on this crucial issue, this issue that's way up the political agenda now. Well, Melanie Leach is chief executive of the British Property Federation and joins me now. Melanie, uh, even with these discounts, do you think people are going to be able to afford these new homes? Well, I think uh, Greater Minds Than Mine have pointed to some of the challenges there, and I don't think this is going to be for everyone. Uh, and as your report has just said, I think we need to get this into perspective. Uh, we know there's a huge gap between housing supply and demand. We need to be building around about 240,000 new homes a year. So this announcement is important, but it's not of itself going to solve that, that challenge. Yeah, now what did you make of the Prime Minister's use of this phrase, going from generation rent to generation mm. own? He's, he's almost disparaging private rental sector, isn't he? Yeah, I was a bit disappointed, really, that he did seem to be using generation rent as a derogatory term, because bu uh, buying a house is not right for everyone, and certainly not at all stages of their life. Uh, and we think that the uh, private rented sector, a professional private rented sector, has a huge part to play in meeting the challenge. We know that there's up to £30 billion available to invest in new, high-quality, professionally managed uh, private rental stock, uh, stuff that looks very different to the kind of traditional image we probably have of the rental sector. And the Prime Minister should be doing everything he can to unlock that investment and to encourage that, to, that, that contribution to solving the housing challenge. Yeah, I mean, we obviously haven't seen the details. Do you worry that this is simply going to... I mean, you could see some of these starter homes snapped up and then rented out, so you don't get over this problem of uh, home ownership being expanded in any case? Well, I think we'll need to look at the detail of how the scheme would work in practice, but what I would come back to is the fact that we've got a huge housing challenge and we need to be stimulating all forms of supply in order to meet that challenge, not just focusing on demand-side measures that will enable a few more people to get onto the housing ladder, but overall won't increase supply significantly. Indeed, and of course, one of those supply bottlenecks, I mean, it's, it sounds as though they are trying to ease the planning rules, but we still have a massive skill shortage among the house builders in terms of bricklayers, electricians. I mean, we're still desperately short of those as a country, aren't we? Yeah, to get near to building those 240,000 homes a year that we need will we'll, we'll lead to all sorts of challenges, whether it be making the system to work more effectively or whether it be to make sure we've got the right skills to actually deliver and the raw materials to deliver on, on those commitments. So I think there are huge challenges ahead, but also huge opportunities. And obviously this is going to eat into the supply of affordable rented housing. That in turn makes it very difficult for people who can't afford necessarily to buy and who's, who have no option but to rent. Yes, we would be very concerned to see the uh, supply of any form of tenure diminish because the fact of the matter is that in order to meet the housing challenge, we need to stimulate supply across all forms of tenure, whether it's for sale, for rent, social housing, affordable housing. We need all of those streams to be operating at maximum capacity. Yeah, are you fairly confident that local authorities are going to grab this? I mean, you spend a lot of time talking mm. to them. Do you think they're going to grab this opportunity? I think they'll be looking at it very hard to see how they can make it relevant to their local circumstances because local plans have to be what drive this. Local people know what's right for their areas and they have to be given the tools and the ability to be able to deliver what's right for their area. So I'm sure they'll welcome it, but they'll be looking very hard at the detail. Yeah, I mean, when do we expect to find out more from the government? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not the right person to be asking about that, but I would hope to see it quite quickly because what we do know is we've got a huge challenge and the sooner we can get on and make play a role in delivering it, the better. Right, Melanie, while we have you, I asked Dave Lewis about this earlier. Are you excited about the abolition of uniform business rates? Is that going to provide a fillip to activity? Well, business rates are a long, outdated uh, system, and we've been arguing for fundamental reform alongside other business groups. Again, the devil will be in the detail. We're nervous about the prospect of uh, disparities across the country, 
you know, which makes it difficult for businesses to navigate, but also risks leaving local authorities behind. So we'll be looking very closely to see how that plays out. And of course, what the Chancellor announced uh, on Monday does nothing to tackle some of the other areas where we know business rates are outdated and unfit for purpose. Things like empty rates, which are a, a tax on struggling businesses when they can least afford it. So we want that fundamental reform, nevertheless, to go ahead because there are other areas it doesn't touch. Right. Okay. Melanie Leach from the BPF. Thanks for joining us. Thank you Appreciate very much. It.